in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome back to making a horror game from scratch. Today we're going to be making a interact and a door system. So the first thing we're going to be doing is actually opening up one of my old projects to see how I did something. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't just go back, memorize exactly how I did it, and then make the video. It almost seems like I'm unprepared. But the reality of the situation is I think it's important to show you that this sort of thing is normal. I don't see much point in making new people feel like they're not very good at game dev, when in reality, we all need help. And in this case, I don't really remember how to do ray casting very well. So let's go take a look. For those familiar with this work, you'll realize that this is Spirit Watch. So here's a little behind the scenes of that game. Anyway, let's take a look at what we're here for. We want to head over to my blueprints and we want to actually not my blueprints. We want to go to the first person character. This is kind of where I, I put everything that has to deal with the player character. Since it already comes with the standard first person pack i find no reason not to use it okay so now that we're in here what we're looking for is this right here so basically it's not called rig uh, casting it's lane trace uh, line trace by channel what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking my camera's transform which includes its position and rotation we're going to draw a line from the front of the camera this is the camera from the front of the camera so many units forward and if it hits something that includes an interact interface which i'll explain later it will interact with that object as you can see their primary action is set up to this event dispatcher just delete this on the left hand side here where it says on use item we're going to delete this as well and just in case it causes any issues i'm just going to get rid of this entire bottom section so essentially we just need this input action primary action and that is it we can even delete the comment we're gonna right click and we're gonna make a custom event and we're gonna call this the line trace event and anytime we press our uh, input primary action we are going to do a line trace let's take a look at what we need to do now head over to the other project, and we'll see that the first thing that happens is we're going to use a line trace by channel. So let's extend from this pin here and type line trace by channel. And there we go. Back to the other project, it looks like we're going to need our first person camera, its world location, and its forward vector. To get this, at the top left, we are going to pull out our first person camera to get a reference to it. Out of the first person camera, we're going to get world location, and we are going to get its forward vector. So what we're gonna do with these is pretty simple. It might seem complicated, but I assure you, if you follow along, it won't be too bad. The get world location is going to go into start. The reason that this is going to go into start is because this is where we want our line to start, where our camera is located. We want the forward vector because we need to know which direction the camera is facing. However, we can't just plug that into the end. That wouldn't make any sense. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out of this and we're going to type in multiply wait 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 mul multi you gotta spell it right multiply there we go and on this bottom one we're actually gonna right click it and we're gonna convert the pin to a single precision float now the reason we're gonna do this is because we're actually gonna set this to 225 now we might adjust this number however the reason that we're doing this is well, we need the forward vector, and then we need 225 units forward from the forward vector. However, right now, this doesn't know where to go. 
I know that might sound crazy, but it's not starting anywhere. However, we have a start. It's the world location. So what we're gonna do is pull out from the world location and we're gonna type in add. Now we have our line set up. We call a line trace. We get the world location of the camera. We start there. And then we need to get the forward vector, go forward 225 units from the camera's world location and bam, we have the end of the line. So now we can check and see if the line crosses anything. However, we can't check anything if we don't have anything that it can currently hit. So we're gonna go back to our world view here and we are going to press shift five on the keyboard, unless yours is already open, and we're gonna click on the cube grid. Set your power of two to three, and with, with nothing selected, go to one of the door slots and build up like that, hit complete. And as long as you had nothing selected, you'll have your own little door mesh now. Now this might not be the right size and everything, but we're still prototyping and I don't want you to panic. It's fine for, it'll work for what we need it for. At the top right here, you'll see that this is, as long as you have this selected, this will be highlighted. We're gonna right click it and we're gonna browse to the asset. Right now we would have a really hard time finding this simply due to the name. So we're gonna press F2 and we're gonna type in 01, always do the number first so that way it's nice and ordered. Uh, zero one underscore door underscore SM for static mesh. Now we have access to the static mesh way easier. We can go ahead and delete this. And now we're gonna go to our content browser, uh, our blueprints folder. And then if you don't have an actors folder, just make one. I already do because I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> so go into your actors folder right click create a blueprint class in this case we need an actor and we're going to call this zero one underscore door underscore bp and this time it stands for blueprint go ahead and open that up once you're inside the blueprint at the top left we're going to press add and we are going to add a static mesh as long as you spell it right a static mesh and we're going to call this door underscore SM. On the right hand side, now we can go ahead and open this up and look at that, zero one door SM. If yours isn't here, just go ahead and search what you named it and it should pop up. Now we need to create an interface. So go ahead and once again, control space to open your content browser and go ahead and make a new folder and call it interfaces. Now these aren't the interfaces you see on screen, these are so blueprints can speak with each other. Go ahead and right click in here, and we're going to go up to blueprints, and we're going to do a blueprint interface. We are going to name this interactable underscore interface. Now let's go ahead and open that up. You'll see we have new function zero. On the right hand side here, let's rename that to inter acted and we want to be able to call this in the editor go ahead and compile and save now let's build our door in the code of course right click and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create one called or a custom event called open door so whenever open door is called we're going to take our door static mesh we're gonna make sure it's not locked. So we need a Boolean and we're gonna name it locked. And we need a branch. In order to get one of those, hit B, hold it in and click. Drag the arrow over to connect it. Then drag locked onto the condition. And actually on the left hand side here, open the eye. And the reason you do that is so that you can lock and unlock doors from the world view, uh, but we'll get to that later. And a lot of these are gonna be moving quite quickly if you haven't noticed. The reason I do this is because it's in a video format and if I move quickly, you can set the pace by pausing and going back. But if I move slow, everybody moves slow even if they don't need to. So that's kind of my logic there. 
Anyway, let's go take a look at our viewport one more time. So this will be what the door looks like when it's closed. However, we need to see what it looks like when it's opened. So I'm gonna press E on the keyboard with the static mesh selected, and we're gonna move it to the open position. You'll see over here that we have this really weird 89.99 repeating number. So just go ahead and set it to negative 90. It's pretty much the exact same thing, but it looks a lot cleaner. Of course, what we're actually gonna do is change this back to zero. We just needed to see that it was negative 90. Go back to the event graph, drag out from door SM and type in move component two. And we should get move component two just like this. If it's locked, we don't want it to open. So true, don't do anything. But if it's false, we want it to move. Move this up like this, something like that, there we go. And how do we want it to move? Well, we want the target relative rotation to be negative 90 on the Z, like we saw in the viewport. We'll go ahead and compile and save. So we're gonna grab all this and we're gonna press C and we're gonna make this say open door, but we're not quite done yet. We also need to make a Boolean and name it open. On the left, drag your new open Boolean and hit set. Connect to the Boolean and set it to true. This will let us know if we ever need to check if the door is open, we will have a Boolean that is already set for us. Now we need a custom event and we're gonna call it close door. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just take all of the stuff here at the top and we're just gonna copy it, paste it, line it up, plug it in. And now we've pretty much already got close done, except we need the relative location to be zero, so back where it started, and we need to set open to false because the door will be closed. One thing I forgot to set, which we will set right now, is how long do we want it to take for the door to open and close? So right now, the time would be 0.2 seconds. That'd be very quickly. So let's just set both of these to two seconds. And if we don't like it later, we can come back and change it. Pretty simple. Go ahead and make another comment and we're gonna call this close door. So now we can set something up. Because we have open and close completed, we can make a custom event called toggle. So toggle is going to look at whether or not the door is locked first off. So get locked, hold B click to get a branch, drag into it, hook up locked. We're gonna need another branch. Is the door open like that? All right, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna check if it's locked. If it's not, it's gonna go, is it open? If it is open, which would be true, we're gonna call the custom event closed door. If it's uh, closed, we're going to call the custom event open door. So this will make it so whenever we call to open or close the door, it's much easier. Okay. With all of that set up, which isn't even everything we're going to do with the door, but for now it'll work to test the system we started making, we need to get an event from the interactable interface that we created. To do that is quite simple. As long as we have the implemented interface and we went and named this interacted and made sure we could call it in the editor, it's as simple as right clicking and typing in interacted. Now, oh, wrong one, I apologize. Interacted, yes. We want the one that says add event, event interacted. So now we have a thing or an event that will fire whenever we call this interface. And what we want to do whenever we call the interface for now is we'll just do toggle. We might change that later, but for now that'll work and we'll just call this the interacted comment. Also, you can be way, way, way more specific with your comments if you're new. I've just done this long enough, which is a really bad excuse, that I just kind of use these to find things rather than to explain them. Uh, it's not a really good habit, honestly, but it is what it is. Okay, so how do we call the interacted interface? 
Let's go ahead and compile and save this and move back to our BP first person character where we're going to continue to test our line trace. So what we need to do now is head back to our other project and see what's going on. The first thing we need to do is get a branch to make sure that it even hit anything. If it doesn't hit something, we don't want it to continue because regardless of whether this hits something or not, it will continue. So we need to make sure it stops if it doesn't hit anything. To do that, we're gonna go back to our event graph. We're gonna hold B and click, which gets us a branch. We're gonna drag into the branch and the return value will simply go into the condition. So therefore, if it hits something, it will say true. If it doesn't hit something, it won't do any, well, it'll say false and we won't hook that up. On the out hit, we're actually gonna do break hit result. So what this is gonna do is give us information about whatever it hit, if it hit anything. So in this case, we want to make sure the hit actor has, we're gonna do implemented, does implement interface, okay? So you can close this and it'll actually stay open there for you. And the interface we're looking for is the interactable interface. And we're gonna create a second branch. So, we're gonna check, did it hit something? If yes, did that something have the interactable interface? If yes, we are actually going to do, this time we're gonna type in inter, interacted, but this time the message. And the target is going to be the hit actor. So, some of you might already be ahead of me on what we're gonna, what's gonna happen here. Compile and save. So, TLDR, shoot a line. Is it an actor that has an interactable interface? If yes, send the message interacted. Oh, well look at that. Our door can receive interacted messages and it will toggle. So now, if this is set up correctly, let's go ahead and put in one of our doors it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it looks like it's in the doorway, I don't really care. We'll go ahead and hit play. So, if we set everything up correctly, we'll go up to the door and we'll click. It sees that it has the interactable interface and sends it a message to which the door says, okay, I have something I can do whenever that happens. If we click again, it will then close. Now we're gonna have to refine this a little bit um, but for now, this is doing pretty great, I have to say. I think these doors are too small. Yeah, these doors are too small, so that's something else we're gonna have to work on. But for now, that's the end of this episode. We now have an Interact system in place and our doors set up. If you're enjoying the series, please like, comment, and subscribe, and consider donating to my Patreon as it will help me continue to make things for free like this and continue to launch free games. I'll go ahead and link my itch.io in the description below so you can check it out if you want to download and try some of those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.